How's it going everyone? Shrewsberry here, and this tutorial is on how to make a ping system in Overwatch. So a ping system is anything that lets you highlight areas of the map so that your entire team can see it. So what we will be doing today is have a simple key combination that will create an arrow that our entire team will be able to see at the map location that we're currently looking at. So that's gonna use a few basic things in the Overwatch Workshop Editor. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, stick around, we'll be going through how to put the code together. So first I'm going to Show Lobby, Settings, Workshop to get into our Settings Workshop Editor. We're only gonna need one block for this, and I'm gonna call this Ping. So we need to set some sort of trigger for this event to happen. And what I'm going to do is set a key combo so that we don't accidentally press it a bunch during the game. So I'm going to have um, a condition on the left side here that is button held. And let's do crouch. And then I'm also going to add another condition here, which is also a button held. And we are going to do interact. So that's F on PC. I'm not really sure what it is on console, but it's what you use to go through Symmetra's teleporter and um, de de deactivate um, Sombra's teleporter. Now we need to have some sort of icon that appears at the location that we're looking at when this triggers. So we are going to create an icon that's visible to... Uh, just our team. So the way to do this is you keep this at all players and you go down to team, type team of event player. That's us. And this position is where it gets a little complicated. So let's first make sure we have it looking the way we want to and then we'll worry about the position. I'm going to do a down arrow. Let's go ahead and make it blue because that's our team color. Wow, team color. And then make sure reevaluation is set to none. This makes sure that uh, as the game goes on, it doesn't keep updating to our new mouse position. It'll just stay there as soon as we uh, hit the button. So for position, we need to do kind of a little bit of a math equation. But what we're doing here is getting a raycast hit position uh, to the surface. So if you type raycast hit position you get a start position and an end position. And what this does is draws a line somewhere in the map. And if we cross over some map geometry in that line, it'll return that position where we crossed over. So we need to draw a line starting from our eye, our character's perspective, that goes outwards in the direction that we are looking. So our start position is pretty easy. We're going to do eye position of the event player. The second position is where we start to do a little bit of math. What we're going to do basically is take a point, we're going to start it at the eye position, and we're going to add a little bit to it so that um, it extends out in the direction that we're facing. So let's start by add, using an add function, and then the top block, we're going to hit eye position of the event player, and to that we're going to add a multiplication of two things. The first thing is going to be our facing direction. And this is a vector, it's similar to a position, it has three values, an x, y, and a z, but it shows um, what direction we're facing, and it ranges from 0 to 1 in each of those values. So that doesn't give us a lot, it would only go about one unit away from our face, so we need to multiply this by 1000 exactly is what I found to work the best. So now we have our endpoint being somewhere out a thousand units away from us, uh, but in the direction that we're facing. Uh, everything else should be good here. Now, if you restart the game, oh, that's a common error. Glad I actually ran into that because you guys probably have that problem too a lot. Um, make sure you set this to ongoing each player. Do that anytime you reference the event player in any script because it gets confused when there's a global rule and you're referencing yourself. It's who who's yourself. Uh, now let's go restart match. And it will work, but then we got something else we got to go back and do. So if we go Reaper here... If we hit crouch and the interact key, 
it'll plop an arrow and you can see that it's floating a little bit above where we clicked but that's just how icons work but it is centered at that point that we clicked so if we hit the bench it's on the bench here but as you can see now we have two arrows it's just creating them and keeping them there indefinitely so what we need to do is give them a lifespan for them to despawn afterwards so if we open our workshops editor uh, we want to add this icon to a variable so we can keep track of it and then wait a little bit and then destroy it afterwards based on that variable that we use to keep track of it. The reason we do that is just in case we wanted to create other icons in between the time that we created this and wanted to destroy it, we can make sure we delete the correct one. So let's set a player variable. And we'll call this P, because ping, um, to the last uh, created entity. This is the last thing that we did, so um, it should be set there. Now, let's wait using the wait command. About one second should be fine. And then we need to destroy... Sorry, I'm bad at typing with one hand here. And spelling. Um, destroy icon. Make sure you select icon. And it defaults to last created entity. So if we weren't waiting, we could probably just use this because the last thing we made was probably just this icon. But since there's a chance that something else could pop up, we want to use our player variable. P. And make sure it's set to player variable, not global variable, because it does default to that, and a lot of my bugs can come from that. So, let's show lobby, restart match. Traveling to Get a thing, pops up, goes away. See that? So let me get out into a uh, better area. And you can ping the area, and it'll even pop up, as you can see, off screen. And this will show up for everyone. So if you found this tutorial helpful to your workshop um, endeavors, please give a like. If you think these tutorials are good, please leave a um, subscribe. I make uh, several tutorials uh, about how to use different workshop features. But until next time, thanks and have a great day.